Hey guys, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and today I'm going to bring you a quick demo of the M10K2018 drawing tablet right over here. And uh, if you want to see the full unboxing and review, my original unboxing review, you can check it out right up here, um, where I kind of walk you through the whole thing. But today is more of a hands-on, uh, just to give you an idea of what it feels like to draw on it and walk you through my experience. And I'm probably going to mention a few things that I didn't necessarily tap on during the original review, uh, getting into some of the more intimate details of it um, and really picking it apart to its finer details with regards to the pen, the tablet, all of that kind of thing. I'll mention ahead of time, this is going to be the beginning of this week's painting. Um, I'm starting it on this particular device, so I'm, I'm, I'm consider this more professional work. I'm not just fiddling around on the tablet. I'm looking for something more specific. However, I'm doing something here that I wouldn't recommend if you have a choice. This is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio tablet. This is a 21 by 9 aspect ratio uh, uh, monitor, which means that the translation is not pixel to pixel. There's a little bit of a discrepancy laterally, right? There's a little bit more width, so it's, you're going to get a, a discrepancy from width to height with regards to back and forth. This is also a 1080p display. It's a gaming monitor. It's not really an art monitor. Um, so just do take that into account, but apart from that, it shouldn't really be much of an issue. I don't find it a terrible inconvenience, but it's not ideal. Just do be aware of that, okay? So I'm going to just jump into this and I'll walk you through it. Now the first thing, just to tell you a little bit more about the pen itself, um, one of the things you'll notice if you're used to other brands, Huyan or, or Wacom or whatever, is it's a light pen. One of the things, one of the, uh, although I like these pen sensitivity and all that kind of stuff, I think that's great. A few little details I did mention in my original review was the buttons themselves, although they function perfectly. Um, it would be nice if this back button wasn't, so, I would take this whole button section and shift it forward a little bit. Because I find that if you're holding it in your regular pen grip, you, you really have to pull your finger really way back to press that back button, to press the top button. Or be, you don't necessarily need to. If you took all of that and just shifted it down, it would make more sense. When I'm doing the type of drawing I'm doing today, which is a little bit more of an abstract expressionist or surrealist type of painting, I tend to hold my hand back in more of a fine art type of holding, way of holding a pen. I find it's more comfortable for me. Okay. The other thing I would mention is I would check with Gelman to see if they have uh, rubberized tips. When I'm working on a pen display, I tend to prefer the, pl the generic plastic tips. But on a tablet like this, I tend to prefer rubberized ones because they tend to have sl smoother surfaces and, and um, I prefer to have a little bit of resistance. Same reason why I put a, um, a, a textured uh, paper-like uh, screen protector on my iPad because the iPad has a very slick surface and having a little bit more resistance can be a little bit more comfortable and give you a little bit of added control. So that's something I would add. but. I've, been, I've spent quite a bit of time drawing on this, and I'm very comfortable on it, okay? So you're gonna, the other thing too is, I love this glove, and this glove has actually become my main glove, uh, namely because it fits my larger hand, and I like the wrist, it's got some nice wrist support on it. I prefer the ones with the larger wristband, I find it's nicer looking and more supportive, but I don't generally use uh, um, these gloves, I don't use drawing gloves for tablets, I usually use them more for pen displays because you see your smudge, it's more up in your face, but for what it's worth, I'll keep it on for now, but I might, might end up taking it off. So let's see where we're gonna go with this. Now when you're drawing, one of the things that's gonna take you maybe a couple of minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes to adapt to, is this slightly different pressure curve. And um, that's something you might notice that every tablet, Huyan, Gaoman, Wacom, whatever different device, they tend to have slightly different pressure curves. However, this is beautifully responsive. I, I really find that the responsiveness of this pen is really nice, but there are certain pressure differences you might note. And it just might take a little bit of adapting. Don't just drop it and say it's a piece of crap. Give it a chance because it's, it might just be a question of a different feel, that's all. And that, that's what I feel it is in this particular case. We'll see, hopefully this goes somewhere. If it does, you'll know because I'll have a I'll have a, a full painting <laughs> that started off on this. But 
as far as what I can, I can say right away that if I, if this painting succeeds or fails, it's not a result of the tablet. It's just a result of me not getting my idea out the way I wanted it to. Yeah, this is responding really nicely. I'm enjoying this for drawing quite a bit. You're going to notice that the, I would mention the pen tip is a bit noisy. You can, you can hear the spring inside it a little bit. Um, again, I'm really scrutinizing it for your sake, just so you know exactly what you're getting into. But for, for an $85, Canadian $85 tablet, I'd be pretty damn spoiled if I'd be picking on this too much. I mean, this is really, really nice. Now, I'll say this just as a little art note on the side. What's the benefit of painting this way? It takes you, it teaches you one of the most important lessons of art. Um, and it, it also reflects something that Feng Zhu had said years ago in a Q&A, which was, everything is shapes. And what that means is, when you're painting an abstract painting like this, the benefit is that you really the only way you can observe your artwork is objectively as just a series of shapes and colors and values and it forces you to step outside the subjective the literal like this is a face that is a shirt these are shoes etc this is a tree you're just looking at things as abstract shapes and you create an image based on its aesthetic design qualities right right off the bat you're not you're not uh, um, you're, not, you're not focusing too much on the subjective, you're focusing more on the, the objective aspects, visual aspects of your painting, which is an incredibly important discipline. And when you translate that practice into doing more literal pieces, where character designs or environment or prop designs, it greatly improves your ability to create imagery without getting distracted by the subject itself. And you just look, at, you look back at something objectively and you say, does that look like a nice shape? And if it's a nice shape, you're on the right track. So that's one of the reasons why I love to do paintings like this every now and then. I re they really ground me, I find. And it's also, I'm not committing myself too much to, to painting anything too specific. That the subject that I'm painting won't get scrutinized. People go, oh, you, the, the eyes are crooked. You know, that kind of idea. It doesn't get that same kind of scrutiny. It's more appreciated for the abstract expression that it is, which is nice. Gives you a little bit more, it allows you to loosen up and not take yourself too seriously, which I kind of like. I'm just going to block in some base tones. Now this, when you come into painting, this is where you might notice that the pen feels a little bit different. Now, if you're seeing a little bit of lag, I'm on a good computer, but I'm recording and doing all kinds of stuff on my computer right now. So, it might delay. It's my my CPU is already being uh, used up quite a bit with other programs and stuff going on. So, again, that's not a tablet issue. That's uh, that's purely my computer. Again, I'm all, the only thing I can do looking at this because this isn't anything in particular. The only way I can judge this piece is. Do I like the way it looks, right? And that, that's, your, that's what your art really comes down to in the end is, does it look nice or not? It doesn't really matter what you're drawing. It matters how that drawing looks and feels to your audience. Yeah, tablet feels really nice. Let me try taking the glove off and see how it feels with that. Yeah, I feel a little bit, my hand, the resistance of my hand is actually helping a little bit. Having too much of a slippery surface feels like, it feels like glass on glass, and that can feel a little bit too light. So I would probably take the glove off for general usage. Here, let me put... There we go. Kaylee Lees. She just quit. Uh, she just quit YouTube, at least for now. But uh, she did a lot of, like, uh, urban legends, folklore, uh, uh, dark matters types of things. Um... And she's one of, some YouTubers just have this nice,
kind of meditative, dark vibe to them, and that really pulls me into drawing mode when I'm painting. You know, I'm taking the kids to summer camp and you know getting lunches ready and making lunch and taking care of my cat and cleaning up the studio and teaching, and then I sit down to paint. Sometimes it's a bit jarring to just jump into painting mode. So listening to like Keely Lee's or uh, or any other dark Vada Vidya, let me know. They have a bit more of a meditative vibe to them, and just listening to them kind of pulls me into art art mode very quickly. It's a it's a good trick if you find yourself kind of having a hard time getting into the right art zone, getting into the right zone mentally. But if you're listening, Keely, thank you. Thank you for inspiring me all these years. So what's my verdict? What do I feel about this? Well, this feels perfect. It feels great. And I, it'll feel even, feel even better if I wasn't working on an ultra-wide monitor, but this really is going in the right straight. Is this painting going to succeed? We'll have to see about that. It's a hit or miss with this type of painting style. I'm not really planning anything, but uh, as far as the painting on this thing's concerned, it's the best 86 bucks you're ever going to spend if you want to work as a professional artist. Honest to God. I mean, if you have the money to invest in a more expensive device, go for it. Spoil yourself. I'm all about that. But, but really, honestly, you can, you can make a career. You could spend years working on this device alone, and, and you, you would have saved yourself thousands of bucks. So it's really nice. And I like drawing on a tablet. I like just sitting here. Back in my chair, like this, without leaning over a drawing tablet is nice too. It's a little bit more of a chill, casual type of posture when you're drawing, so. He says as he fixes his posture, because I've probably been drawing like this the last 10 minutes. There we go. 20 minutes, okay. I'll close this up soon. I just want to just kind of mess around with this. In the, I don't know if you can hear that, but Kaylee Elise in the video was complaining that her, her neighbor started a weed whacker the moment she started the video. I had my neighbor decide to start hammering his balcony while I started the video, so I had to close my windows. It's getting a little stuffy in here because of that. All the struggles that us YouTubers have to go through. Eh? Yeah, this feels great. I found like I've I've drawn on other on other tablets or pen displays where I felt like it was just a, it just didn't pick up the way I wanted it to. Price doesn't always equals better performance. It really doesn't. And and you really gotta test out different devices and find the ones that work that really work for you the best. So I really recommend you do that because um, you know you can. New technology comes out and things you can get things for a fraction of what you paid for something else and it performs just as good if not better. So, you know, technology upgrades so quickly that, you know, from one year to the next you can, you can, you can really get a very different performing device. So really, you really owe it to yourself to, to experiment, go to stores, test out different devices and stuff. And I really, I recommend giving this a shot if you're looking, if you want to save yourself a couple of bucks. I really, and I'm saying this seriously, I'm not, uh, I, there's, there's no benefit to me to promote this. I already have, a, I already have uh, my, my more high-end stuff, right? And I'm very comfortable on the stuff I'm using. But I can really, I can really stand behind this. It's a really nice device. Yeah, okay, so here's my verdict. The, the tablet's perfectly fine, a bit smooth. So this is my recommendation for future generations of the Gelman. Let me just mute Kaylee there for a sec. Um, the pen is a little bit on the light side. I would add weight to this because it's a, it's a battery-free pen, which is a great feature. Um, it makes it a little bit light in the hand, okay? It makes it feel a little bit light. Um, so I definitely say that. Uh, I would definitely recommend getting a rubberized grip. You can get them for like two bucks on Amazon, probably cheaper than that. There's just, they're just sleeves that you can do to give you a little bit more girth and grip to the pen, maybe even add a, t a, a tiny bit of weight. So I recommend that. Um, and uh, a rubberized pen nib would make a difference as well. Oh yeah, and lastly, the pen, I'm just talking about, really, really I'm talking about really nailing the design. Um, the pen itself, 
uh, um, the pen buttons, shift them down slightly so that w if and when you are holding this in a more standard grip, your you don't have to pull your, your finger all the way back like this to press the back button. You can just gently move your finger back and forth. That's what people are generally used to, and it's it's more comfortable. There's less of a it's it's less of a stretch with your finger. It's you feel like you're just in the moment, and you're not going out of your way to press a button all the time. But the pressure sensitivity, the responsiveness, uh, it's fantastic. I absolutely love this, and for the price you're paying, if you're on a budget and you're looking for a, for a drawing tablet for work or school. Two thumbs up, man. Really nice. So, if you want, like I said, if you want to see the original review, you can go check it up. You can go check it out. I'm going to link it in the description below and uh, have fun. Happy shopping. Take care.